Okay, now, um, here, I, you know, for those who love Him, that is obedience. So when a Christian obey Him uh, to love God, when a Christian love God, then God will prepare for them blessings that eyes has not seen, things that we have not seen in this world, nor ear heard that we have not heard about this, nor have entered into the heart of man. That uh, the, I, the blessings, you know, has not been thought of by people. That people cannot think of these blessings, which God has prepared. So God will prepare for those who love Him that things that the human heart cannot think of. So this is a uh, promise of grace. So grace is here is that the blessings will be things that eye has not, has not seen and ear has not heard and the human heart cannot think of. Now, when, whenever we look at a Bible verse, we want to think about deeply about what is God's nature and what is God's grace here. Now here, the nature of God, the nature of God is His inner quality. The nature of God is that He has the ability to know our hearts, to know whether we love Him or not. And He is Him who motivates us to love Him. And He's a generous God. Whenever we love Him, He'll prepare for us that things we can never imagine. And He's, he's rich, He's prosperous, and He's generous. And He will reward those who love Him. So He's, you know, He's a loving God, He's a generous God, He is a rich God, a prosperous God, and He knows everything. And He is not a forgetful God. He will not forget all the good things we have done, and He will not forget our love for Him. So He'll remember our love for Him. He'll for sure bless us. And He also has creativity. He'll make things the human mind cannot think of. Actually, when we look at all the creatures in the world, you know, if you have a chance to, to watch videos or see photos of animals in a deep ocean and also different kinds of birds that are so beautiful that you cannot imagine that God has this creativity. And then when we obey Him, He has this creativity to give us grace that we can never imagine. Now, in my life, I have so many blessings I cannot imagine. I thank God that we have this Global Fire Missions Ministries that God has uh, blessed us with offering. Now, I'm, for myself, I'm serving without salary. I want to say this. I serve God without salary. God has blessed me enough. I don't need any more salary. So I don't take any salary from Global Fire Missions Ministries. All the offering to Global Fire Mission Ministries mostly go to helping uh, the pastors in Africa to be able to watch my training and also enable us to go out to mission field. We'll go out for mission trips in the future uh, as the uh, COVID gets uh, uh, lower, then we'll go out again. So I thank God for the provision there. That God has blessed us. And God has blessed you too. So I hope that you will thank God for that. That God has prepared things you never imagined. And in my life, there are so many things that God has blessed me. I thank God that there are so many, many things that God has blessed us. And I appreciate that. So I hope we'll motivate people by saying, when you love God, you will not be neglected by God you will experience so many blessings that you cannot imagine. Okay, Mark 12, 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Okay, now this part is all instruction. Uh, so instruction on what to do. So this is the law, not the warning part, but the instruction part that we shall love the Lord with all our heart. So we can explain this. Now when we explain this, we can also talk about God's grace. Okay? Because in every area, we can see God's grace. 
Okay, now, love the Lord with all your heart, from within a heart, the whole heart will love God. Now, God can work in our life. This is grace. God can work in our heart so that we have a love for Him. And then whenever we love Him, He'll prepare for things the human mind cannot think of. So He'll work in us when we obey Him and respond to Him. He's very, very happy. And when we love Him, He'll prepare for us things that we can never imagine, that our whole life will be full of blessings, that we'll have abundant life. So I hope that you always, always thank God. Thank God for everything we receive. And we thank God for every blessings, and then we'll be filled with joy. When we are filled with joy, your church will grow. And everyone will be blessed by God when we are filled with the joy of the Lord, instead of filled with pressure. Now, some of you may have pressure. In your home, if you are fighting, yelling at your spouse, if you are fighting with your spouse, if you are yelling at each other, when one is worrying and yell at the other person, then it would ruin our life. So instead of yelling, now that is a sin, that we don't do that, but we obey God by loving each other and be positive. If there is problem in the family, we work it out together and don't blame each other, but we pray to God and believe that God will have a way to bless us. So we trust in God and we help each other, we work together, then we'll have less pleasure Let's pressure. And then we praise God together. We have strength together. Then your whole life will be full of strength and joy. And the people in the church, uh, in the neighborhood, when they see your life, they will be touched by God's love. And then your ministry will grow. So I hope that we all live in God's grace, that we love God with all our heart. It's God who changes us and gives us that motivation from His Holy Spirit. And then with all your soul, it's, it's the soul includes our, our mind, our will, and our feelings, so, and our spirit. So we love God with all our mind, that our whole mind knows that, believes that God is good. God is almighty. God can bless us. So the whole mind agrees with God. And then the whole will. I, want to follow God all the days of my life. You know, I want to serve God all the days of my life. And, uh, you know, I'm 71 years old now. And I still continue to serve God. And I continue trusting God. I know that God is almighty. God can give us blessings. So I want to continue to serve God with joy and strength. And I know that when I follow Him, I love Him, He will bless me. So I... My whole soul, my mind agrees with God and my will, I, my will is to serve God till I die. Even before I die, I will tell the people around me and say, I thank God for everything and God will bless your life. Please, you know, love God more, obey God more, and God is very happy with you. So I will always be motivating people with God's grace. In my whole life, I can see God's grace. So I hope that you all obey God and love God and the whole family love God together. Then you have more strength and more joy. And with all your strength, so with all your strength, all your might, all your ability, that you will continue to love Him. That uh, with all your strength, whatever you can do for Him. So this is the first commandment. So, uh, so now this is the instruction, but when we talk about this, we also talk about the grace of God. That the grace of God is that when we, uh, it's God who moves in us. He moves in us to give us joy, uh, to give us the love of God. And it's Him who moves in us that we will um, love Him and have the ability to love Him, to have the strength to love Him. And then whenever we love Him, He'll be happy with us, He'll see us, and then He'll reward us richly. Okay, and then... Now this is warning now, 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed, O Lord, come. So here is the warning. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. So those who don't love Jesus, even though 
when Jesus has blessed us in so many ways and they still don't appreciate God, they don't love God, they don't honor God, they don't obey God, they don't see God as precious, they don't treasure God, they don't really say, Lord, I hunger for you, I want you, I need you. If a person has zero love for God, there is a warning, he might not be born again, he might not have spiritual life. And then there is a warning, he can be cursed by God and go to hell. If a person has zero love. Now, what I mean is this, we don't go to heaven by our good works, but when we are born again, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit who gives us the new life. And the Holy Spirit will work in our life to produce fruits. That is the grace of God. He will produce fruit. And then when we respond to God, we'll continue to obey Him. Whenever we obey Him, He'll bless us. So He has so many blessings, so we want to love Him. And then if a person has zero love, that he doesn't love God, he doesn't obey God, he doesn't pray to God, he doesn't have a relationship with God, he doesn't serve God. That means his life is living, you know, apart from God. He's separated from God. Then he is not a Christian. He's not a born-again Christian. Then he will not, he will not have uh, eternal life. Now some people say, then they say, oh, I'm afraid, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not very good. Now, if we're not good enough, then we say, Lord, please forgive me. We repent, we repent of our sin, and we repent. That's already the first fruit. And then we pray to God and say, please help me to overcome my sins and my weaknesses. We're praying is also the next fruit, that we have a close relationship with Him, that we trust in Him. Lord, I trust in You that You'll help me. That is already the fruit of trusting in Jesus. And then we obey God by loving God, by loving other people, by serving God. And then all these are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if we are not good enough, we just repent and ask God to help us. And then whatever little thing we can do for God, God is very happy and God will bless us. So, so we can see that it's not very difficult to obey God and to s respond to God. Now, do we have to be perfect to go to heaven? No. Whenever we're not perfect, whenever we have sins, we just ask God to forgive us. That's very simple. And sincerely repent of our sin, and it's the blessings of God. He'll for sure forgive us right away. So we can be very sure of salvation. Now, so for Christians who are weak, all we need to do is just repent and say, God, please help me. I'm sorry for my sins. I trust in Jesus as my Savior. Please help me turn away from my sins and give me strength. The moment we rely on God, we already have more strength, that He'll continue to give us more strength. So I hope that we say that it's not hard to build up a relationship with God. Now those people who have a weak relationship with God, if they st still repent and trust in Jesus and try to follow Jesus, they are still born again. They are still saved. But if a Christian has zero prayer life, has zero uh, relationship with God, doesn't obey God at all, is zero, everything is zero, then there's a danger he might not be born again. Then he need to repent of his sins and ask God to forgive him, and then God is very happy to forgive him and, and uh, bless him. Okay, and then, so mainly we motivate them with the grace of God to, when you love God, that God will honor you and He'll give you blessings that you cannot imagine. And this is the warning here, that if we don't love God at all, this person can be cursed by God. Okay, and then the fifth point is obedience, obeying God. Especially the Great Commandment and the Great Commissions. Okay, Matthew 28, 19. Go, this is instruction. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of ages. Amen. So here, uh, instruction, go and make disciples of all nations, all nations in the world, baptizing them in the name of Father and Son and Holy Spirit. This is instruction to baptize them and then teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. So 
this is also instruction that what we should obey and then when we do all these things then I'm with you always then I'm with you always that this is the promise of God that God is happy with us and he'll pour us the pour to us the blessings that he'll be with us always now even when we are able to go that is already a blessing that is him who motivate us to grow to go and motivate us to make disciples of all nations and give us the wisdom to teach them to teach them everything that Jesus has taught us that's already the wisdom from God is the grace of God that give us the wisdom that give us the opportunity to serve God give us the way to serve God and also give us fruit when these people hear the word of God when we have the life of God they will be attracted by our joy and our life and our strength and that is the grace of God so when we are filled with the grace of God when we are filled with the joy of the Lord the presence of the Lord then we can motivate people easier and then people will be attracted by God and then they want to follow God so this is um, mainly we motivate people with God's grace God will be with you and God is telling you motivating you to do evangelism God is motivating you to build up the spiritual life of people and pray for them and help them spiritually and in their daily life so God is moving in us and then when we respond God is very happy and when we do these things then God will be with us always and he'll be with us to bless us and give us strength and give us wisdom now with this verse I want to say something because there are some people who say that you know when you do mission work when you do a lot of mission work and and serve God a lot and you're very active in your ministry then Satan will attack you more now that is not true because it says right here Jesus will be with us they say that those who are faithful Satan will attack you more that's not true now Satan will find ways to attack you but if we repent of our sins and trust in Jesus as our Savior and take care of different sins in our life then God is very happy to bless us then God will, God will preserve us and God will protect us so we don't have to be afraid you know some people will tell us if we disobey then we'll be uh, then God, uh, that Satan will come to attack you they you know there are some people there were some people who said to me you go to the mission field so much uh, be aware that the, that the devils will attack you that this is you know they want to bring fear to people Jesus says I'll be with you why you know Jesus didn't say when you go and teach them all, all the things I've observed and when you go to the whole world then Satan will attack you then Jesus didn't say that so it's very strange that some people would have teachings like that now we can tell people if they serve God and have sins then Satan will find a way to attack them when they sin not because when they do evangelism when they do evangelism God is very happy with them and God will protect them now then some people say how come I have difficulties when I do evangelism now remember not dif dif difficulties are not necessary attack from Satan some people say well the, those people don't want to believe that's attack from Satan we don't have to say that it's just their sins these people they are sinful therefore they reject God it's the sin is not necessarily the attack from Satan so don't think that every bad thing is an attack from Satan do not be afraid of Satan because Jesus has given us the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions you know that he has given us the power to overcome all of them and nothing can harm us okay and then Matthew 7 21 not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven many will say to you in that day Lord Lord to say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name and then I would declare to them I never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness so this is warning not everyone who says to me Lord Lord the warning that they shall enter the kingdom of heaven not everyone who pray to God will enter the kingdom of heaven 
But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven, the only those who obey, so this is obedience. So that's green color. Remember, the blue is the warning, and red is like the blood of Jesus is the grace of God. So only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So it's very important for us to do the will of our Father in heaven. And, and the obedience should be motivated by grace, that when I obey God, God is very happy. And God will for sure bless me and be with me and He'll give you, me eternal life and uh, that we can enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, and then many will say to Jesus on the, you know, on the day that, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? So they have prophesied. They have cast out demons. They have done many wonders in Jesus' name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me you who practice lawlessness. So this is warning to those people who don't obey God, that they might be doing things in a church. Now, there are some people who told me, someone prophesied to me that I'll earn a lot of money this year, and it didn't happen. Someone prophesied to me that I'll marry a woman or a man, uh, that I'll get married this year, and it didn't happen. I said, don't believe every prophecy you hear. They, you don't know their life. You don't know their life. There's some people who prophesied in Jesus' name and they never knew Jesus and Jesus never knew them. So we have to look at the life of the people and then whether this person really has the gift of prophecy. Now there are some people who prophesy just you know, anytime easily, not, not from the move of the Holy Spirit. There are people who prophesy just as a habit to show off. That is very, very dangerous. So, um, some people, now, of course, there are true prophets. So we have to discern. And don't believe any evangelist come to your place and then say, I have the power of God. And don't just uh, believe them, but watch the life and see the teachings and whether they teach from the Word of God, whether they are teaching people from the, uh, you know, with God's grace. But I noticed that many people is just warning people, just yelling at people, shouting at people in the teaching. They're not talking about God, they're just talking about what we do. So that's instruction and warning. And uh, I seldom hear people talk about God is full of blessings and He is almighty and He can bless you in every way and He can raise your life up to a high level and He works in your life to change you and whenever you obey Him, He'll respond to you and He's very happy and He'll continue to bless you. That seldom do I see people talk about grace, God's grace all the time to motivate people, to let people see the beauty of God. God is full of beauty. Okay, so some people prophesy in Jesus' name. They're not necessarily Christian. They're not necessarily born again. They think they're born again, but they don't obey God. That means they, they don't have the real Christian life. And they have cast out demons and done many wonders in Jesus' name. Jesus still used them, still uses them to do wonders, but then these people disobey God. Then Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, so they don't obey the law. So this is the warning that those who disobey God totally, who are not changed by God at all, they have the danger that they are not born again. They cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So this is warning. Now, how about grace? Now, when the passage doesn't have the grace of God, uh, ex explicitly, then you can find the opposite. So those who trust in Jesus as a Savior and follow Jesus moving and obey Him, that means they bear fruit. We're not saved by doing good, but they, they are saved and then they bear fruit. That shows that the faith is real, is alive. Then God is pleased with them and it's God who motivates them. And then when they obey God, God will record everything they've done for God. They, he, God will record everything and then they will have eternal life and also they have rewards from God in this life and in eternal life. So that is the grace of God. It's God who changes us so that we'll obey Him, changes us so that we'll 
will follow Him, changes us so that we'll pray to Him for strength. We, he changes us so that we can have wisdom, so that we can serve God to do all these things. So, so this verse is a warning, a verse of warning. But even when we have a verse of warning, we can still tell people that it's God who changes us so that we can obey Him. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot obey God. We cannot believe in G Jesus. It's, you know, if not, it's in 1 Corinthians 12, 3. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. If not for the Holy Spirit, no one can confess that Jesus is Lord. It's the work of the Holy Spirit that we can confess Jesus as Lord. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the faith. It's the Holy Spirit that motivates us to change. And then when we respond to Him, then fruits will come out from our life and strength will come out from our life. So that is the grace of God, that one. That it's God who motivates us to change and whenever we obey Him, He's very, very happy. Okay, and then the last point, we still have time uh, to talk about this, serve God. So when we motivate people to serve God, now serve God including, includes glorifying God. You know, anytime we talk about God, and tell people God is good, God is full of blessings, God is full of goodness, He is full of wisdom, and He wants to bless you. He wants to pour His blessings into your life. He wants to bless your life, and I have been blessed by God. So if anyone serves God, let him know, uh, let him know Jesus, let him follow Jesus, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my Father will honor. So if anyone serves Jesus, let him follow Jesus. 